Imagine an object moving in a perfect circle, like a planet orbiting a star. This is a classic example of uniform circular motion, a fundamental concept in physics that helps us understand the dynamics of objects in rotational paths. This, my friends, is uniform circular motion. It's not just limited to celestial bodies, it can be observed in everyday objects too. The object travels at a constant speed along its circular path. Whether it's a car on a racetrack or a ball tied to a string being swung around, the speed remains unchanged. It never speeds up or slows down. However, there's a catch. While the speed is constant, the motion is far from simple. Even though the speed is constant, the object is constantly changing direction. This change in direction is crucial to the nature of circular motion. This continuous change in direction means the object is actually accelerating. This might seem counterintuitive at first. This acceleration is the key to understanding circular motion. It's not about speeding up or slowing down, but about changing direction. Now you might ask, how can something accelerate if its speed doesn't change? This is a common question, and a great one at that. The answer lies in understanding that velocity and speed are not the same. Speed is a scalar quantity, meaning it only has magnitude. Velocity, on the other hand, includes both speed and direction. It's a vector quantity. In circular motion, the direction is always changing, hence the velocity changes, leading to acceleration. This is known as centripetal acceleration. This acceleration always points towards the center of the circle and is called centripetal acceleration. It's the force that keeps the object moving in its circular path, preventing it from flying off in a straight line. Centripetal acceleration is the heart of circular motion. It's the force that keeps the object moving in a circle. Without it, the object would fly off in a straight line, like a ball released from a string. Think of swinging a ball on a string. You can feel the string pulling on your hand. That pull is the centripetal force, and it's always directed towards the center of the circle. The tighter you hold the string or the faster you swing, the stronger the force you feel. Centripetal force is everywhere. It keeps satellites in orbit around the Earth. It allows cars to safely navigate curves in the road. It even keeps the water in the washing machine from flying out during the spin cycle. Consider a roller coaster looping the loop. The track exerts a centripetal force on the coaster, pushing it towards the center of the loop. This force prevents the coaster from flying off on a tangent and ensures a thrilling yet safe ride. Now, let's dive into some simple math. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. The magnitude of centripetal acceleration, A, is directly proportional to the square of the object's speed, V, and inversely proportional to the radius, R, of the circle. This relationship is neatly expressed by the equation, A, equals V squared over ER. This equation tells us that for a given speed, a smaller radius results in a larger acceleration. That's why sharp turns in a car require a stronger centripetal force than gentle curves. Section 5. Calculating Motion in a Circular Path In this section, we will delve into the fascinating world of circular motion and understand the forces at play. Let's consider a practical example to make this concept clearer. Imagine a cyclist racing around a circular track with a radius of 20 meters. This scenario will help us visualize the principles of circular motion. If the cyclist maintains a constant speed of 10 meters per second, what is the centripetal acceleration experienced by the cyclist? This is a key question in understanding circular motion. Using our equation A equals V squared divided by R, we can easily calculate the centripetal acceleration. This equation is fundamental in physics and helps us determine the inward force required to keep an object moving in a circular path. Plugging in the values, we get A equals 10 meters per second squared divided by 20 meters, which simplifies to 5 meters per second squared. This calculation shows the direct relationship between speed, radius, and acceleration. This means the cyclist is constantly accelerating towards the center of the track at 5 meters per second squared. This inward acceleration is what keeps the cyclist on the circular path, preventing them from moving in a straight line due to inertia. 
Understanding this concept is crucial for analyzing any object in circular motion, from planets orbiting the sun to cars taking a curved road. Section 6. Exploring Non-Uniform Circular Motion So far, we've focused on uniform circular motion, where the speed is constant. But what happens when the speed changes? That's where non-uniform circular motion comes in. Imagine a car accelerating as it exits a curve. In this case, the car experiences both centripetal acceleration, which is towards the center of the curve, and tangential acceleration, which is along the direction of motion. These two accelerations combine to create a more complex motion. Section 7. Unraveling the Components Tangential Acceleration Tangential acceleration, as the name suggests, acts tangent to the circular path. It's responsible for changing the speed of the object. If the object is speeding up, the tangential acceleration is in the same direction as the velocity. If the object is slowing down, the tangential acceleration is in the opposite direction. In non-uniform circular motion, the total acceleration is the vector sum of the centripetal and tangential accelerations. These two components are perpendicular to each other, forming the legs of a right triangle, where the total acceleration is the hypotenuse. Section 8. Calculating Total Linear Acceleration in this section, we will delve into the intricacies of determining the total linear acceleration in scenarios involving non-uniform circular motion. This is a fundamental concept in physics that combines both centripetal and tangential components of acceleration. Let's calculate the total acceleration in a non-uniform circular motion scenario. This involves understanding how different forces and accelerations interact when an object moves along a curved path. Consider a particle moving in a circle of radius 5 meters. This particle is not just moving at a constant speed, its speed is changing, which adds complexity to our calculations. At a particular instant, it has a speed of 4 meters per second and is increasing its speed at a rate of 2 meters per second squared. This means that not only is the particle moving along a circular path, but it is also accelerating tangentially. First, we calculate the centripetal acceleration, a equals VI squared over ER, which is 4 meters per second squared divided by 5 meters, giving us 3.2 meters per second squared. This centripetal acceleration is directed towards the center of the circle, keeping the particle in its circular path. Next, we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the total acceleration a total equals the square root of a squared plus a t squared, which is the square root of 3.2 squared plus 2 squared, resulting in 3.77 meters per second squared. This step combines both the centripetal and tangential components to give us the total acceleration. This example demonstrates how to determine the total acceleration when both centripetal and tangential components are present. Understanding this concept is crucial for analyzing the motion of objects in various fields, from engineering to astrophysics. By mastering these calculations, we can predict and control the behavior of objects in motion more accurately. Section 9. Conclusion Appreciating the ubiquity of circular motion From the tiniest particles to the largest celestial bodies, circular motion is a fundamental phenomenon in our universe. Understanding the principles of centripetal acceleration and the equations governing circular motion allows us to explain a vast array of natural phenomena and technological marvels. So the next time you see an object moving in a circle, take a moment to appreciate the intricate dance of forces and accelerations at play.